All right, everybody, we're back again with another video of the NSA Codebreaker Challenge. This time we're going to be working on task five. Um, if you recall, in my previous video, we discovered that the leader was this Liam person. So that's who we're going to be trying to start with today because we're going to be digging into this a little bit deeper and finding out how we can break into the server and discover the identity of the top level organization leader and then their last encrypted message. So the first thing that's provided to us here is this authentication program, authverify.pyc, which if you are familiar with it, for your file extensions, you will know that is a compiled Python file. So we'll go ahead and give that a download. Now we can't really do much with this file unless we can actually decompile it into something that we can use. Now for this I'll be using uncompile which is available on pip or whatever package installer you like to use. So I can actually go ahead and uncompile this file into something that I'm able to look at and figure out what's happening with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uncompile this file so that I can do something with it. So I'm going to type uncompile 6, the input file, and then pipe that to auth, or output it to authverify.py. So now we have a Python file that we can actually look at and see what we're working with here. So, so what we see here is that this is meant to be a token verification script for OAuth tokens. If you recall in the previous one, we, uh, we were connecting and getting some information about the OAuth server that was being used for authenticating users. And I guess we're meant to assume that this is a piece of software that would be on the actual authentication server. So it's going to receive some kind of request with a token, and then it's going to send that to a, a service running on the local host and do introspection on it. And that's where it's going to examine the information about the token and get some results from it. If we look at this check token function, we can see it does a little bit of verification on it. And then it gets down here to where it actually looks at the token content. So we see that it says that the token should be active. It should have a scope of chat, or at least it should include a scope of chat. And then the token type should be an access token. Now one thing that's curious here is that it returns true for that. But if you're familiar with OAuth tokens, then you should know that an OAuth token is meant to verify the identity of the bearer of that token in most cases. And so it would be very important if the token introspection actually looked at the identity of the person that it should be tied to. In this case, it doesn't. It just checks that it's active, has a scope that includes chat, and that it's a token type access token. And that's very important because it means that these tokens can be used for any user and it will return true and authenticate them. So to take advantage of that, instead of dealing with the TerraTime app for this challenge, we can actually have a much easier time with this and the future challenges if we move to a external XMPP client. So for this challenge, I'll be using the Ignite Real-Time Spark IM client. And this is actually the same maker of the actual server software, the OpenFire server. So we know that it'll work well with it. And this client has a bunch of extra features that are very, very helpful when dealing with these last few challenges. So when we pull up the Spark client, there's just a little bit of setup that we need to do here. Under the advanced settings, we, instead of saying automatically discover, we can manually put in our chat server address, chat.terratime.app, the port 443 because it runs on just a standard SSL port, and then these certificate verification options should be checked because we don't need to know about verifying these certificates. 
And also we want to start the debugger on startup because that will give us some very useful information about what's happening. So we can go ahead and if you recall from the previous video, the leader was Liam. So we're going to go ahead and log in as our cell leader and see what's happening. Now, as we said before, the OAuth token that is used in the app is actually usable for any person for up to one hour after the token is created. So to make it a little easier to get these OAuth tokens, what I did was actually copy the process that the app uses in order to create my own Python script for performing this OAuth authentication. And this basically just kind of speeds it up because it makes it where I can just run this script and get a token back immediately instead of having to go into the emulator every time. And this will last for one hour. So now I can go ahead and copy this into my Spark client for the password, domain terror time dot app. And then username, Liam, vhost2524, and then go ahead and hit login. So now you can see we're logged into the Spark client, and this is really useful because we have a contact list here, and we can also see the raw messages that are sent, being sent back and forth through the app and so this gives us a lot of insight into what's happening and also we can go in here and click on send packets and we can actually construct requests of our own so this makes it a lot easier than having to deal with some kind of man in the middle attack with the android app instead we can just log in and interact directly with the server here so what we're going to need to do actually is figure out the identity of the overall leader so what we're probably going to do is go ahead and start creating a list of these users and we can keep track of who's who here. So we're logged in as Liam. Liam has Batia, Hunter, Callie, Logan, Sarah. Now we know that Callie is our arrested person. So they're definitely not the organization leader. So one of these other four is going to be the overall organization leader. We also know that Sarah isn't the organization leader because they were another underling that was in the conversation before. So we know it's got to be one of these three. So now let's go back to the login screen here and let's log in as Batia. And now we can see that Batia has Hunter, Isaac, Leo, Liam, Logan. Now, I believe that Isaac and Leo are two of our test accounts, so we can ignore them as well. And then we know that Liam is the cell leader. So one of these people, Hunter or Logan, has to be the overall organization leader. So now let's go ahead and try logging in as Hunter. So now we see Hunter has contacts with Batia, Jack, Liam, Logan, and Madeline. And finally, we'll go ahead and log in as Lo Logan. And now we'll see that Logan has contact with Batia, Hunter, and Liam. Out of these two, I would think that Logan may actually be the organization leader because they're only speaking with the cell leaders, whereas these others have some of the underlings and they have test accounts showing. So we'll go ahead and say that we believe that Logan is the overall leader.
Now I mentioned before that in the XMPP client, we have the ability to send these raw packets. So that means we can construct requests for the XMPP server. One of the things that we can do is just do a little bit of research and find out about this protocol and how we can construct these requests. And one of the first things we're going to want to do is a service discovery. And this will allow us to find out what's running on the server and what we have the ability to do. So we can actually go to our send raw packets here and just kind of cut and paste from, from this reference and maybe make a few changes to it. And this request is gonna be coming from Logan. And we'll go ahead and click send on that. And now in our debug window, we can scroll down here and we see that we got a response from the server. And this shows us what abilities we have on the server to do. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to go and look up this reference for message archive management. And this is important because the Terra Time app doesn't actually save any of these messages in the client whenever you send them. They're actually stored as archive messages. And that's why I can click here and don't see any messages showing. But I can request the archives for a specific user by sending a request. So we just go down in this reference here and we see a command to query the archive for messages. And this command is going to be specific for the user that's logged in currently. So we'll go ahead and paste that command here and hit send. And now we see that our debugger is scrolling up because it received a bunch of results. So let's just go ahead and click this bottom one here. And we can see there's a message here and it's wrapped up in this body. We have some JSON. Now this is actually really interesting that we can look at and examine the structure of these messages. It can make it a little bit easier for you to read here. So if we go ahead and make this format a little better, we can see that we have a message key and then some base64 string followed by another string a signature a message itself and an IV or initially initialization vector and this kind of tips us off that they're doing some kind of block encoding AES now this actually is going to be a key wrapping scheme and what it means is that there is a single smaller key that is used to encrypt the message with AES then that small key is encrypted here with each of the public keys of the recipients of the messages. Then the fingerprints of those public keys are put here in these indexes. So what that means is that when a user receives this message in their TerraTime app, it will check to see if they have a public key that matches this fingerprint. If they do, it'll use the accompanying private key to decrypt the message, then use that key to AES decrypt the original message. And that, that's how they can get back the, the message and display it on the screen. However, for this task, we don't actually need to decrypt any of that. We just want the encrypted content of the last message sent by the user. So let's go ahead and go back here, paste in the message body, We'll say that we're logging in as Logan. And now we've completed task five.